Useless Podcasts. Hey everyone, this is Mike with Useless Podcasts, and I'm just recording today to let you guys know that we're still alive. We're still going to be making videos, but we're we're still on our break for a little while. Uh, we should be back very soon, but I just wanted to uh, let you know that we're not back yet. We wanted to post a video in the meantime, though, uh, just to keep you guys tidied over. Uh, so what I did was I went back and found the audio for uh, an episode that we lost the video for. This was when we went to Planet Iridia. Um, we're going to be re-recording this level later on, and it'll have different commentary over it when we do. But we wanted to give you guys just you know, a taste of this episode that never was. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. And welcome back to yet another episode of Ratchet and Clank, uh, Up Your Arsenal Developer Commentary. I am Tony Garcia. And I'm Mike Stout. And Mike, I'm still loving that intro. Glad I could help. That's the only bit of praise you're going to be getting from me for the rest of this commentary. For the rest of the whole Ratchet 3 commentary? Yeah, or just for the this rest, episode? For the rest of, well, you know what? For the rest of our friendship, that's probably the last one. I'm Ouch. just going to throw it out there. Ouch. No more. No that's more praise. <laughs> Let's head to Quark's hideout. As you mentioned, this was my level. Uh, I was pr- I was pretty proud of this level, although I remember it being really, really hard for no good reason. Uh, like, I, I just spawn hundreds and hundreds of these enemies over and over again in the same huh. spots. But that's not that's something I would never do. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you put not. hundreds of hundreds of enemies in a snow level, Mike? Nobody likes that. It's, uh, that sounds like a terrible idea. It seems to be a recipe for disaster, although I've heard recently that that actually was the most fun level of Ratchet 2. I, I, I just, I can't, I don't know how it got in your head that that would seem like a good thing to do, put hundreds and hundreds of enemies into some level. Yeah. It just I, seems like you're trying to frustrate the players at that point. I, you should have known better. <laughs> it's not something I would ever do. I'm just saying. Oh, Tony, I, we might not actually be able to play through this level. What? What happened? Because, What's going uh, on? I think that we need the teleport pad gadget to get oh, through this Oh, so we have to go do Iridia then. We do. Uh, oh my god, the snow ninjas. The the the, the, the lawn, lawn ninjas. ninjas. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's let's end that last episode. We'll do Iridia. I'll fit I'll fit them together somehow. No, it's just let's just keep going to Iridia. It's fine. I mean, I think we're doing fine. Okay. All right, we'll go to Iridia. Uh, this level is a reused multiplayer level, isn't it? Uh, it seems like it. Uh, it Pretty seems sure. familiar. I think that some of these battlefields were reused, uh, like with parts of them locked off, you know, so they were linear, but uh, but they were re- repurposed multiplayer stuff. And uh, that was part of how we were able to justify cost-wise doing multiplayer. If we can make some multiplayer levels that we can also use for single-player content. Right, absolutely. Uh, it's just, it's not, you know, it's not like we're trying to give everybody less when that happens. I mean, there's a certain amount of time. We have a certain amount of resources. We want to maximize those so that we can give as much content as possible. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's that's pretty much the whole explanation for it. Mission accomplished already. Yeah. I got Kicking ass already. Look at this. I got to do the hover ship level, man. Oh shit, Mary's right. You did compliment me. No, that was a general compliment. That wasn't directed at I you. I see. It, it, as long as you're not saying the situation I'm doing... was kicking ass. Ah, you were not. Uh, the situation. The situation of being in the hover ship. I was like, oh man, it's kicking ass right now. Ah, I thought you were talking you... about the guy from the Jersey Shore. Oh no, no. no. Okay, because I was gonna say, why the fuck do you watch the Jersey Shore? Not even going to dignify that with a response, huh? No, I got nothing. No defense for watching the Jersey Shore, huh? You got you got to set me up with something quality, Mike, if you expect <laughs> a good comeback. Oh, man, you are committed to this premise, aren't you? You know what? Another thing that I heard uh, changed in the online game. Uh, I heard that the uh, that the turrets on the bases 
have significantly less hit points these days. Do they? And it really changes the dynamic of the uh, of the online play. I I don't know if I can comment on that. I I have no idea why that would happen. Yeah, I, I don't know. There's a lot of things that I mean, I couldn't. I, I wouldn't even hazard a guess as to why some things are the way that they are. Yeah. Uh, my own. Uh, if if I had to ever hazard a guess, is because shit was broken, and they unbroke it. That's probably uh, that's probably the right answer. Oh, I do love. I did sign on really quickly into the online play. Uh, I do love that they still go st- default to that message that has like the message of the day <laughs> that we like never ever updated. Yeah, I just love that that's still there. Cause why not? I know. Well, I mean, again, they probably didn't want to change it for fear of introducing bugs. Speaking of changes, though, uh, the HUD is a lot prettier than it used to be. Uh, I didn't notice a difference, but you seem to. You seem to have noticed. It's sure. much more yellow than it was orange. Uh, I uh, will say that the HUD in Going Commando did change. Uh, it's no longer solid blue. It's a blue and white mixture now. Yeah, and there's Going some... Commando. It looks like they're doing some some sort of uh, like gradienting. Like the, essentially, they, they redid all the textures, but they had so many more pixels to work with, so they actually could make it look a lot better. And uh, I'm pretty sure that they minimize the orangeness of it uh we keep talking about the orange hud but i don't know if we've ever gotten into it uh have we (laughs) it was it was dramatic the orange hud because it was blue right up until the day it was orange and that was very soon before we shipped yeah i don't know who where the i don't know where the call came down from i mean it's one of those things we talked about before about how uh you know when the decision is minor everybody has an opinion on it right and, uh, i mean the hud is definitely the hud color is definitely one of those things that every single person had an opinion on uh every single person talked about what color the hud should be blah 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 and uh so <laughs> a lot of strong opinions about the orange hud and i'm not sure where the call came from uh to uh to go with this color but it was blue if for I a very re- very very long time I remember Ted being involved with the decision to... Uh, oh, most certainly he was involved. Because nothing, nothing at the studio ever really happens without Ted. Uh, or at least didn't. I don't yeah, know not at, that, I not at that time. I have no idea how but it But I would now, have but. a hard time believing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, some people have asked us to talk more about Ted. Uh, what... Uh, what what do you think uh, we could say about Ted? Yeah, I mean, we said a lot about Ted at last. Uh, I think it was the uh, Planet Barlow episode in in Ratchet Two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We said a lot about Ted, but again, uh, he every, he's got his hands in pretty much everything, or at least he had his hands in everything that was going on in Ratchet at the time. Uh, there wasn't a decision that didn't go get funneled through him at some point. You know, in addition to doing all of the business stuff that you do when you're a CEO running a company, you know, making the deals, uh, dealing with the publisher, all that stuff. Uh, Ted was always very, very involved in the creative decisions in the game, and he was also uh, very involved in making sure that the game was was high quality, had a very, you know, very good sense of polish. Uh, so we're blaming Ted for the orange shot. <laughs> you're blaming Ted for the That's orange shot. That's what we're shot. saying. That's what you're saying. I would never blaming Ted. I would putting it on Ted. I would never blame Ted, Ted for to be anything. And the HUD was orange. That's what Mike Stout just said, ladies and gentlemen. You know what? The last Ted the last thing in the world I would ever want is to make Ted angry because he could kill me with with one hand. Uh, with his voice. With yeah, I have a I have a black belt in kung fu, and I'm pretty sure that Ted would rip my head off. Doesn't Ted also have a black belt in some martial arts? Yes, or? Kempo. Which Kempo. Uh, every th- the only thing I know about Kempo is that it's incredibly brutal, and I don't want to be on the receiving end of it. Uh, and I don't know if we told the story again. It's it's Roberto's story. Uh, God, I I don't remember if we told it. Um, it's this is Roberto's story as he told me. Um, there was one night back when he was working on Spyro Three. I think it was right. That's what I want to say. Spyro 3. Before our time, for sure. Uh, Roberto was working late one night and was sleeping in the office. And, and uh, he, when he, he'd basically gone off into one of the back rooms and fallen asleep. And everybody else had left. And nobody knew that he was there. And he woke up from his nap at like, you know, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning or something. Everybody's gone. Lights are all off. Doors are all locked. 
and somebody had turned off the alarm because they didn't know somebody was still in the office. So when they left, they turned on the alarm and, and when they left. And so Roberto woke up and started walking around and inadvertently, because he didn't know, uh, and set off the alarm and like didn't know what to do, like was freaking out because he didn't have the code to shut off the alarm. And so the alarm was just going off. Right. And uh, he was just sitting there like, oh my God, what am I going to do? What's going to happen? So the alarm company sees that the alarm is going off, uh, calls Ted. Because that's what they do, yeah. That's what they do. And say, somebody has broken into your office. Uh, we're sending people over there right now. But Ted jumps in his car and speeds over to the office. So Roberto's sitting there at the door, just like trying to intercept whoever the first person to walk into the office and try to explain what's going on. And the first person to arrive at the office is Ted, who comes bursting through the door and looking to murder somebody. I've never heard this story before. And Roberto was just like, it's just me, Ted. Please don't hurt me. It's just me. I accidentally set off the alarm. And he said the look in his eye, like he was just ready to start some shit and make shit happen. Oh, man. Yeah, uh, Ted. Ted was Ted is awesome. Uh, he is awesome, and in every sense of the word, right? In in addition to being like super nice, Ted is also like he provokes awe in you. Like I don't know how better to put it than that. But if you've ever seen that episode of the Tester that Ted was on, and you see him rip into those people, <laughs> Ted is is bigger than life. He's bigger than you. You know. I just remember you know? the first my first day. Uh, I didn't know who Ted was, and uh, the guy looks like 25. And my first day, I was like, that's the guy? That's the guy in charge? The guy is barely older than me. But <laughs> that was my first impression of Ted. It's it's amazing, but yeah, great guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. No I, complaints I, whatsoever. You know, I remember you saying that uh, when you – because you came in. I, I was – I had been a tester for a little while, and uh, I recommended you, and they brought you in. And then uh, – and you were like, wow, he's so young. <laughs> That was like the only thing you said. I remember that. It's difficult to explain Ted beyond saying that he's rad and that he's larger than life. But, I mean, that's that's the best way to explain it. Absolutely. There's a lot of tear noise right now, man. Jesus, there's They're so They're all over the place. Oh, look at the award the Snow Beast award winning rockets. That's right. You know, there's a bug on those tear noids. And we just saw it. I don't know what the fuck. Again, to go back to I don't know how the fuck it happened. But they shoot out two laser beams. Really? I don't understand it. But when you see them fire out their laser beam, there's two of them that come out side by side. I, don't, I have no idea how such a bug could happen. It doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> like, I've tried to think about it for a long time. Which and I just have no idea how Is that it the, bug could come the about. Gu the guys in the mech? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I'll, I'll their, check it out. Their laser beam attack is just two laser beams. Huh. I don't get it. I don't know what's going on. Maybe they had to replace the effect with a different effect? No, it looks like the exact same effect. It's it's the it's the exact same effect. There's just two of them. All right. Let's see. Oh, oh man. Yeah, I don't know what the hell happened. It's just another one that's right next to it. It's just offset. That's weird. It's so weird. It's the exact same effect. I don't know what's going on. I really don't get it. Huh. There's so much weird shit like that that's just in this game. Uh, you know, I think I uh, uh, there's that bug with the enemies targeting Ratchet. I'll bet you it was because of the way that we changed. Uh, does it happen in RC2 also? Um, I haven't noticed it. Because uh, I, for I mean, once I saw it, it kind of just I threw in the background is oh, this is a thing that happens. So I wasn't really on the lookout for it in RC2. I remember with this game, we changed how we handled enemies noticing the hero. Because uh, in the past, it was... Um, for all the other games, they would just track where Ratchet was, right? But in this game, we changed it so that things could pretend to be Ratchet. Do you remember? No, we had decoy gloves in the other games. Right, but we had always special cased them before this game. Uh, like, in this game, we actually had a system. Like, you would query it to look for the hero... And then, uh, but it would just find out what the topmost priority thing in the hero chain was. And we didn't have that in the other games. Uh, we, we did it a different way. I remember because all of my shit broke in between Ratchet 2 and Ratchet 3. And I had to change what hero I was targeting 
whenever I was targeting a hero. Maybe. I mean, there's, it's just it's just weirdness. I could be talking out of my ass, but I, I think I'm right. Give us another topic off your list of topics, Mike. Oh, yeah. Uh, hang on. Shit, I lost the list of topics. Oh, Mike. I can't play and find the list of topics at the same time. You know what? There's this button called the start button, and it pauses. <laughs> It's on the controller. Hate, it's right next I to the hate, select button. Looks like a I triangle. I hate you so much. I, like... <sighs> Just saying. So much. I don't know if you knew. Maybe you didn't. I'm here to help. I'm trying to do my best. And I'm out of rockets. Use a Zodiac. We have a Zodiac? Or the, uh, whatever, the plasma thing. The one that shoots out all the lightning bolts and gets everything. It's the best weapon. The Tempest? Tempest. Yeah, that's the one. It was called Oh, it was called oh, the I Spitting was Hydra. The water. That would have been hilarious. Yeah. It was called the Spitting Hydra at one point, so that's what I always think of it as. Where are those rockets coming from? Ah, oh, fuck. You can never know. That's the glory of those rockets. You don't know where they're coming from. Cuz they just come they're straight down above you. Coming from off camera. Oh, how do I even fucking avoid that? <laughs> so one of the things that, uh, that people have been asking for is like to talk about sort of the the tools and the workflow and like what it was like uh, uh, actually working on the game. You know, like from from uh, say a programmer's perspective or a designer's perspective. So why don't we talk a bit about like what your workflow was like? Most of the programming was just done in Visual Studio. But our internal tools, uh, we've already talked about our level, level editor in Maya, uh, for sure. Um, we also had, uh, we had a really awesome character preview tool that, uh, man, I really liked our character preview tool. It was just a quick little tool that you could run, launch off the command line that would, that would display uh, any one character in, in engine on the TV. And it would just pump out all the data, like number of tries, number of polys. You could cycle through all his animations, make sure they were all playing properly. Right. Um, it was a really awesome tool. I love that. I loved our character preview tool a lot. The thing that always pissed off the animators was that. Uh, so, in order to save memory, that we were talking about, like we were talking about before, uh, we would keyframe the animations, and that's basically uh, throw out any unnecessary animation frames and just use the the essential ones uh, so, so we had less animation data and thus would save memory overall uh, and <laughs> animators have an eye as to what frames are necessary and a vastly different opinion as to what necessary frames are right. compared to say a programmer or a designer a programmer would would take it from a pragmatic standpoint and be like what is the least possible number of frames I could use <laughs> to make this not look yes, shitty? Yes, yes. Yes, they would. And uh, the, the animator would be like, what is the most number of frames I could keep and still be on my memory target? Uh, so there was a lot of back and forth there about, uh, you know, not letting, not letting programmers and designers keyframe animations because they were ruining, uh, r ruining all their hard work. By just being like, oh, we don't need these five frames. They're not there anymore. Um, and it's not like a, it's not like 2D animation where you cut out those frames and uh, uh, it immediately looks like something's missing. You know, in uh, in 3D animation, the computer just does that work for you, right? It imagines what those frames look like and then it just, interpolates between them. Yeah, yeah, just kind of figures it out, right? So, uh, you know, when we'd look at it, we'd be like. Oh, it's fine. It yeah, looks good. No There's problems. nothing wrong. Right? But, but uh, you know, the, the previous frame might have had the guy's arm behind his back, and then it clips through his back or something like that, you know? Right. Uh, but we don't notice it because we're always looking at it from the front or something like that. Uh, and that, you know, that, that that's a pretty big flaw. Uh, and if you're an animator and, you know, you're, you're – your future job prospects are going to be judged based on <laughs> your the work that goes into your previous games, right? <laughs> you probably don't want uh, a programmer deciding whether your animations look good enough or not. Right. 
So I have some sympathy for that. No, I definitely understood. But at the same time, uh, when the levels run out of memory, they don't come to the animators and tell them your level's out of memory. They come to the programmer and say your level's out of memory. Fix it. <laughs> uh, that's true. And that's sort of where I was always working from. But couldn't you then have gone to the animators and said your, your shit is busted, Tony? Why couldn't you do that? I mean... Because it's easier. It's just so much easier for me to just sit there and throw out keyframes. Because it's not a matter of... When you're down to the wire, it's not a matter of, uh, oh, I, I need to set this memory target for us to be at, and I'm going to try to get, get it all out of this place or whatever. It's just a matter of, I'm going to go through these enemies one by one, and their animations one by one, and only keyframe the ones that I need to get this level working and running again. So that you can go home and sleep. Exactly. So it's not like I'm say, it's not like I would ever be like, okay, I want the one I like I want the one I tyranoid to be keyframed better. It'd be like, no. I'm just gonna start working through these enemies until I find a place where I can find some memory and then I'm going to keyframe it. As opposed to really knowing off the top of my head where that memory is going to come from uh it's about finding the memory it's not about you know knowing where it's not about like going out and getting it you got to find out where that memory where you can get that memory and then you just got to take it like alexander the great that's right it's it's the joys the joys of working on the playstation 2 well i mean it's not like that goes away with current gen hardware i mean there's still Uh, lots yeah but 32 megs is not it's so small. It's so small. And that was 32 megs for everything, right? We didn't have 32 megs for graphics and 32 megs for yeah, that like was everything. video card. It was everything. So we had 16 megs of graphics uh, uh, RAM and 16 of uh, for the CPU, right? We split them in half. Yeah, something like that. It was yeah, it was brutal. Memory was always the was always the enemy at the end of the at the end of the process. Uh, You know, we would shoot too big and the levels would be too large and we'd have too many animations on the enemies and too many different types of enemies. And And two copies of every Tyranoid. And the the thing is, like, the building the level, um, things get added over the course of development. You don't don't start off with everything there. Uh, And nothing goes in in a huge clump, usually, either. So it's just uh, one day a new animation comes in that's necessary and now all of a sudden you're out of you're out of memory or a new texture is you know a new object is textured and now oh look we're out of memory that texture put us over and then you got to find it you just got to find the memory somewhere um it's it's a fun process and this was sort of compounded by the fact that uh so we had two different kinds of playstation 2s that we could test on uh the kind that ran discs and then the kind that just sort of ran off of the data that was on your computer, yep. right? Uh, and the the ones that ran off disks were called test kits, and they had less memory than the dev kits did because the, the idea with the dev kits is you want to be able... You don't want all of your programmers to stop working immediately, you know, and all your artists and all your animators if one person takes the game out of memory, right? Uh, like... You want to have some leeway in there so that it's not a game crashing problem. The thing is, is on a test kit, running out of memory is always a game crashing problem. Yep. A lot of times we'd find memory bugs that that weren't apparent when we'd run them on the tool or the dev kit that would only show up, you know, on a disk. So those were particularly maddening. Absolutely. Um, Well, it looks like we're finally done with Iridia. I think we're done then. So that means we're done with developer commentary. We're done with this episode, Tony. Sounds like it, Mike. So in the next episode, the one that is going to be the ultimate episode, the episode that will will save you at a, at a spiritual level, <laughs> the episode that will make you wealthy beyond your wildest dreams, the episode that will increase the size of your penis, <laughs> this episode is going what to What if you crush. don't have a penis? Will it still, will you grow one? Yes. Yes, wow. I think you, and a beard. You'll probably grow a beard from watching that episode. Wow. Yeah. That's impressive. I think even if you don't have a beard, one will just sprout. That's an excellent thing for a podcast episode to do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so uh, uh, so stay tuned. And for developer commentary, I'm Mike Stout. And I'm Tony Garcia.
and we'll catch you next time. I think I'm going to cut the penis line.